Hey guys, what's happening? Move, think, smile followers in the fatigue-free professional group. Um, Ellie and I wanted to come on here this afternoon, kind of an impromptu Saturday evening live and talk to you about something really, really important. The, uh, well, four days ago, the World Health Organization just made a major announcement and they have announced that burnout, right? The term burnout is now an occupational phenomenon. And we wanted to come on here and kind of reveal, you know, pull back the curtain, reveal what this means for you, uh, the implications and, you know, what, if anything, you could do about it and kind of how they're diagnosing it. Because it's really interesting, you know, we've been working in the field of burnout and fatigue for more than five years now, and it's been kind of fun and interesting to watch how the medical community is slowly making progress and identifying that this is a real global, right, problem. So it's been upgraded from a a thing to an occupational phenomenon. Elia, <laughs> what, what are your opinions on this? Yeah. So one, I'm really excited just because this is going to just spur conversation. And to me, I think that's the most important thing, especially when, you know, so many people are working an insane amount of hours. They have more pressure than ever before. And we just don't have the, the strategies really to handle it all. And the World Health Organization was the one that said that stress is the epidemic of the 21st century. And, you know, a lot of that chronic levels of high stress really lead to burnout. Um, but I still feel like their description is pretty vague, um, and could use, you know, some more detail. Um, so yeah, of course, we'll go ahead. I was gonna say, so here's the thing. So, you know, um, I'm going to get kind of geeky on you for a second and do doctor speak here. So in the official world health organization, um, ICD 11, which means international classification of diseases, the 11th edition, they say burnout is an occupational phenomenon. It is not classified as a medical condition yet. And they basically say it's factors influencing health status or contact with health services. So burnout, as they say, is a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. Mm -hmm. Chronic workplace, workplace stress that has not been successfully managed and is characterized by three, as they say, three dimensions. Um, we're very familiar with all three of these. We, I, I personally believe there are more. But what they say is feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion, mm-hmm. also known as fatigue, right? Um, increased mental distance from one's job. That's a polite way to put that. Or feelings of negative, negati- negativism. I've never think I've ever read that word before. I've seen it published. <laughs> <laughs> um, or cynicism related to one's job. And reduced professional efficacy. That means your productivity has gone down the toilet. Yeah. And they're saying that burnout refers specifically to phenomenon in the occupational context and should not be applied to describe experience in other areas of life. So what they've done is they're they're calling this, well, they're calling it work-related phenomena, right, Ellie? It's specifically work-related. Yeah. The other important thing that they're, they're parsing out is that a diagnosis of depression or anxiety must be ruled out as the first kind of cause before burnout can be brought in. And that's a really fascinating conundrum as well, just because, you know, for a lot of people, anxiety and depression is a part of burnout, right? So they're really Mm -hmm. trying to qualify this comes from work, but that there shouldn't be first and foremost, you know, this depression. And I think that's a really slippery slope. I mean, that's. So, yeah, yeah. so so this is really crazy. So in our experience, right, with our clients and bringing them in, Um, there's always going to be, it's a mix of symptoms, right? And the main cause for burnout, what starts at the top of all of this, right? Is it's going to be fatigue, being tired, right? That's the start at the top of it. That is the main root cause of everything that leads to this waterfall of symptoms, including mental problems or mental disorders or mental, whatever you want to call them, which include anxiety, fear related disorders or mood disorders like depression, anger, resentment, guilt, that kind of thing. Um, And what the World Health Organization is saying is that in order for a doctor, in order to say you might have this occupational phenomenon, right, that before diagnosing burnout, they must first rule out adjustment disorder, which basically means it's kind of like being homesick, right? You're you're just having a hard time adjusting. Um, Disorder specifically associated with stress, that is such a broad topic, like stress is responsible for 80% of doctor's visits, guys. 
Um, and then they say they've got to rule out anxiety and they've got to rule out mood disorders. So basically what the World Health Organization, the cool thing is they've recognized that burnout is a legitimate thing and they're upping its status in the DEF CON scale, right? Yeah. So yeah. we were at DEF CON none, and then one, then we're like at DEF CON two right now. Pretty soon we'll be at three, four, and five, you know, in the, in the, the crisis of the world. But you, a doctor can never get there because they basically put these rules on top of it saying that you've got to be diagnosed with, if, if you have any of these, you've got to be treated with these first. So if you have burnout, you're going to have at least one, if not more of those. So you'll never get down to the burnout in the first place. And what's going to end up happening is the doctors are going to treat your symptoms, right? Yeah, sure, they can treat you for anxiety and sure they can treat you for depression. Sure, they can uh, treat you for adjustment disorder. And more than likely, they're going to use one of two methods to do this, right, Ellie? They're either going to use medication, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And or they're going to suggest traditional, you know, conventional therapy or counseling. Now, if you guys don't know the difference between the two, so a medication chemically changes your brain chemistry, right? So you yeah. just, you're just not upset or freaking out or unhappy. But as more and more scientific evidence comes out and research is showing that they're actually causing fatigue. And while you're not unhappy, they usually cause you to not be happy either. They can be very limiting on that side. It's not the case for everybody, but there's a lot of statistical evidence out there that shows that. And the other thing that they're doing, you know, the other way is, you know, traditional therapy and counseling. And typically when they use the Socratic method to do this, what they're trying to do is they're helping you to try to deal with what is accepting the state that you are in right now, that it's okay where you are. And, you know, Ellie and I are firm believers that uh, it's not okay where you are. You know, if you're dealing with fatigue, exhaustion, burnout, or any of the waterfall symptoms with that, it's not okay. And just treating those symptoms, why it might get you some relief eventually is not going to fix the root problem. And the root problem is, Elia... Oh, I think I was going to say, I mean, I think the big thing here, I mean, well, root problem for sure is, is fatigue, right? Kind of like you said, the, the cascade effect, we are running ourselves ragged. We're not recharging. We're not taking care of ourselves. Um, we just start breaking down from a, you know, biological level on down our mental capacity, everything starts just degrading. Right. Um, and if anybody's ever experienced, you know, that kind of fatigue where you notice that when you're tired, like all your insecurities start popping up. I mean, again, that's kind of like a a very small but important cue um, that you've run yourself down, right? It's that difference between, you know, when you feel really jazzed about life or really um, energetic about, about things and then you get exhausted and all of a sudden your life feels like it's a total mess, you know, but I think the other most important thing I want to say, and I just think this is really interesting. I mean, just today I received two very, um, heartfelt emails about, uh, just thank yous and saying, you know, it's so nice to know that I'm not alone. And I feel like this is one of the worst parts of burnout is that people feel like it's like the end. They kind of feel like it's a dirty word, that it's shameful, or they just don't really understand that's what's happening to them. There have been an overdrive for so long that it's not until they basically land in the doctor's office that they, it kind of wakes them up to what's happening. And so many people isolate when they get to that level of just you know pushing and, and um, wearing themselves down. And so you know, if anything, I feel like the most important piece of this article and the thing that I want to say over and over and over again is do not isolate, you know, reach out. Like it is, um, it does not mean anything about your skill, your value or your worth. It doesn't mean that you're not good at what you do. Right. Um, like I've said before, a lot of times people that are really good at what they do are the most susceptible to this, right? Cause they're extremely passionate and extremely dedicated. Yeah. Super. And, you know, referring back to those emails that we received, you know, it's absolutely, it's like one of our clients just, just wrote us this amazing, amazing. Thank you. Um, thank you for being there. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for getting myself through this. And he literally, he literally wrote, if it wasn't for you guys, I was driving my car like a hundred miles down the road, looking for the nearest tree I could crash into thinking about how that would be an accident and my family would be taken care of by my health insurance policy. Um, that's no joke. 
Yeah. Guys, that that's 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 not, that's what this stuff does to your brain, right? And we want to tell you that life doesn't have to be so hard. And and yeah. you and you can change and you know the implications about this are really interesting. Like the World Health Organization in here's from, you know, a, so you got the CNN article, then you got the CNN article and basically CNN is yeah. basically saying that it can only be um, um, applied in the workplace. It can mm. only be applied in the workplace. Yeah. I remember when I was a stay at home dad, that was a job. I burned the, burned the F out. I know yeah. that for sure. And I think it's funny that you have to rule out all these other things. And it's like something is something weird is going on there. Either either they just there's just too many people, there's too much red tape, there's too much bureaucracy, there's too many countries, or there's too many other things getting in there. Um, you know, because we know, you know, the research is showing that fatigue, right, is the root cause for mood disorders like anxiety and depression. Fatigue is the root cause for gut disorders like IBS. Um if fatigue is a, is a, is a big, 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 big cause for weight gain. Right. And burnout is when you start having multiple things going on. I got a little anxiety, a little depression. I got some weight gain over here. I got some problems with my stomach, blah, blah, blah. Then it comes down to burnout, but they have to rule out all this other stuff before you get there. And they're, they're ne- you're never going to get to that burnout syndrome. And yeah. And again, I mean, these are all just, you know, these are all just labels, right. Of, of, kind of all of these different things that we're experiencing. But again, you know, I think looking at just the fact that our modern society has gotten, we are so busy, we are taking on so much and there's so much coming at us that a lot of people, I mean, I've heard some of our clients say, you know, I'm just burnt out on life. Like I just have so much on my plate and I keep trying to move stuff off and I didn't think I was overpiling myself. Right. But it's just like, I wanted to have a career and I wanted to have kids and I want to be able to do these things. And, and, um, and again, but it just feels like unsurmountable. Right. So I just think it's a very interesting thing because, you know, we, you know, for us, we were doing something we were really passionate about things that we loved. We loved our customers. We loved the whole idea. And I think some people think, you know, their passion that's just going to run them forever, right? But there's a real reason why they also say, you know, another way of saying burnout is compassion fatigue. So those people in, those nurses or people that work in rescues or things like that. So there's a lot of different variations of words, but all coming down to the same thing, which is you're just, you're, you're done, right? You don't have anything left to give because you've just depleted on yeah. all levels. Right. No, Ellie, Ellie, you're absolutely right. And it's, it's no motivation. It's waking up in the morning. Sometimes you're more tired than when you went to bed the night before, you know, you're dragging through your day. Like if you can't get by through a day without having a cup of coffee, like if you, if you just like, if you need to get rid of the brain fog, you're dealing with fatigue and either you've started to gain weight or you've had other symptoms or other things are going on. And there's a real interesting term out there. You know, some people are like, well, I haven't gained any weight. You know, I'm good. I'm good. I don't know if you've heard of this. It's called Tofi, right? It's thin on the outside, fat on the inside. And basically what that means is even though you might look like you're at a decent weight on the outside, because of the things that are going on with the mental stress and the way that you're, you're, you're having, you know, it's distorting your nutrition choices. It's distorting your sleep patterns. It's distorting all these things. You actually have metabolic conditions that would ignite an ambulance, right? It, it's really crazy. And here's something else. I just realized this, Elia. Now, yeah. and I know you've got this in your book, right? So the guy who t- coined burnout, remember his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Frederick. Herbert Freudenberger. Yeah. Right? Do you remember what year? I don't remember what year. Okay, 1974. Okay, yeah. He released a research article, a scientific article published in 1974, talking about this was yeah. super detailed. And the reason he called it burned out because when people got to the burned out place, right? Yeah. You know, to the, to the end that they would actually light a cigarette and they wouldn't even smoke it and they would just sit there and they would just stare and it would just burn all the way out. So that's where the term came from. 45 years later, the World Health Organization is finally acknowledging it as an occupational phenomenon. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the shit that society is feeding us in the way that we should work and the way that we should eat and the way that we should live is completely distorted guys. Well, this is, yeah, this is why I, you know, I really appreciate Arianna Huffington's work. You know, she says we're living in a culture of burnout and we've idolized that we've idolized the overwork. We've idolized the perfection and I don't sleep, you know, I only sleep three hours a night and I work 80 hours a week and I'm fine. I'm just fine. Right. And, um, yeah. as we know, I mean, you're going to pay whether it's now or later, you're going to pay. And I think people really need to understand, um, how to catch the symptoms sooner before they end up landing in the hospital. And, and again, that's what we're really passionate about. And also just because we've seen firsthand how this affects the family dynamics, um, how this affects, you know, relationships, um, you know, kids. It's, it's disastrous. It's invasive. It's disastrous. And here's the problem. People don't think they're burned out. They're like, well, I'm burning out, but I can fix it if I change my job. Or if I just take a couple weeks off, or maybe I need a short sabbatical. Guys, I'm telling you right now, we work with people. It, that, those things do not work. They do not fix the problem. There are things you specifically need to do. Very, very specific things. It's more than just what you're eating. It's more than yeah. just getting in some exercise at Planet Fitness and getting on the treadmill for 30 minutes three times a week. It's when, where, and how you're doing things. And it's more than what you're physically putting in your mouth. What you eat Yes, it is critical, right? It is a very, very big thing about this. I mean, your nutrition is one of the giant factors for living, but it only represents about 45 to 50% of what, what actually makes you healthy and what yeah. actually take, can take your burnout and turn it into badass energy. And a lot of people don't realize how much, you know, your thinking affects your energy levels, you know, um, as we... Um, I don't know if any of you guys saw the interview that Adam did with Richard, you know, but really mm -hmm. how he said he just really realized the way he was thinking about his life and looking at things was also a big part of his fatigue. And, you know, I can tell you from my own experience too, of kind of being this internal optimist that sometimes that gets me into trouble because it's that, that same thing of I'm okay, I'm all right, I'm just right. fine. Right. And not, well, that's, that's, that that's, the, that's the, um, <laughs> The placebo of, um, I don't even placebo, what's the right word I'm looking for? The positive thinking trap. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's the best way to put it. It's like, okay, everything's good. I'm going to be fine. I can power through this shit. Everything's going to be good. I'm going to wake up tomorrow. It's going to be, and it's, and it's not. It's not. Next thing you know, you're, you're, even though you're living in the same, ha same house, your kids are growing up without you. And you're watching mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're coming home and you're just exhausted at the end of the day. And you're just like, you don't have any motivation, and but you're just powering through just to make it happen because you want to be a good dad or a good mom, a good parent, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know damn well. And now, and now I just, I literally talked to somebody this past week who's like, yeah, you know, I'm dealing with all this stuff. I've got a lot of anxiety going on. I've got a lot of, you know, I've got all these problems. And now my kids, they both have anxiety disorders. And I'm like, has it occurred to you that kids pick up on what's going on in their surroundings and the first thing they do is they learn from their parents, even if it's subconscious? Yeah. If your energy is in the wrong place and you're dealing with that, I can guarantee the other people in the family are going to experience that too. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, again, it's yeah. it's not it's not um your fault. This isn't stuff we were taught in school, right? This is this is a part of what it means to evolve as a human. And right now we are being asked to evolve in a big major way, because if we don't learn how to change our relationship with all the stressors in our life, the amount that we're working, uh, the, the mental stress we put on ourselves, we are like losing amazing people, you know, left and right. And so, you know, I think the big thing, again, we just really wanted to come on and, and remind you guys and just say, you know, Hey, look, there's some good steps being made. You know, we try to educate about this. Um, cause again, a lot of times you're just so overrun and so busy. You're like, I can't even stop to think for a second. Like I'm just going to keep going, keep going. And so I think, um, you know, again, just, you know, if there's one thing I could say to do, and that is don't, like I said, don't isolate. So 
Um, you know, if you spent your Saturday today completely exhausted, unable to do the things that you want to do or completely covered over in, in work, or you can't stop thinking about work again, those are some red flags. So just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you gotta, you gotta think about it as like, you know, we all have these dreams of what we want to do when we grow up. Right. You know, and by the time you get into your forties or your fifties, you're just like, okay, cool. You know, I've got some success behind me. But things, I've, how did I get here? This is not really what I was planning on it being like. It's like, yeah. okay, now I'm kind of tired. Uh, I got to, yeah, I could lose a few pounds, maybe 20 or 30 or 50. Or if you're like me, 65. I don't know if you guys knew that. I was up to 250 at one time. Um, and you're just kind of like, you know, yeah, sure. It's the weekend. Yeah. You know, have some wings, have some beer, whatever it is, or go out there, take a walk on the beach. But is that really what you want to be doing? Or do you want to be out there riding mountain bikes? Right. Or do you want to be out there? I don't know. Just whatever, whatever, whatever energy looks like for you. I mean, for LA and I, it's like riding motorcycles or it's, you know, going kiteboarding. That's our, that's our gig right there. Right. Or paddleboarding or surfing or just hiking through the mountains and climbing and just driving around and traveling. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people, they settle for traveling, but they'll get to like the national park and they'll take the easy trail or the scenic lookout where they just can drive up to but they don't actually get to experience this stuff because they just don't have the energy anymore. And it's crazy, you know, a study was released not long ago that 47% of people working more than 40 hours are being forced to retire early because of health problems. That was a scary stat. <laughs> yeah, that that's one, a super scary that stat. Blew my mind. Yeah. And it's increasing. And what they didn't yeah. mention is the 53% who actually make it to retirement, 80% of them are not able to fully do what they had planned on doing because they don't have enough energy or they're dealing with health problems. They're just yeah. the lucky ones that weren't forced to retire. Yeah. Guys, this is crazy. And what's really weird is, you know, the World Health Organization and you know, a few years ago, you know, recognized burnout, right? And it's kind of like the who's who of disease handbook, right? And um, but they they had released it as a state of vital exhaustion, DEFCON yeah. one. Okay, that's what it was before. Yeah. And it was this kind of weird in between you're not really sick and you're not fully capable of doing your work thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And the new definition is a little bit more detailed, right? So we're at DEF CON two with it. And I guarantee you it's going to take a while because these guys aren't really super fast to act on some things. Um, and there's a lot of influences from corporations, a lot of influences from governments. There's a lot of influence from other things that, you know, I think they're going to change the definition every time. It's going to include more and more and more things. And pretty soon burnouts, you know, what's really cool is they've identified it as a syndrome. That's probably the, the coolest thing there. And a syndrome, if you guys don't know, that just means multiple stuff going on. Yeah. You got more than one thing. And I don't think they're going to classify it as a medical condition because if they do, that means there's going to be a treatment for it. And if it's a multitude of stuff, you know, our traditional or our regular medical system they're really good at helping you diagnose that you have disease X, right? And they're good at helping you treat disease X, but they're usually pretty poor at helping or defining or, or figuring out why you have disease X in the first place. Yeah. So guys, if, 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 if any of this stuff is resonating with you, you know, and you're feeling tired, You've got some weight gain. And if you're working and you're working more than 40 hours a week, and that includes coming home and having to take care of the family or other stuff in your life. And if you're coming home at the end of the day and you're just like, screw it, I'm just going to watch some Netflix, you know, or I'm just going to sit on the couch and watch a ceiling fan. Or I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to just dick around on my computer and play a bunch of games. So I just really don't have the motivation or energy to do anything. Then, you know, what Ellie and I want to do is we want to invite you to, well, book a call with us, guys, because this is what we specialize in, right? We specialize in getting rid of fatigue, exhaustion, and burnout syndrome very fast. Yep. Using methods and nothing weird, <laughs> just so you know, <laughs> no, nothing weird um, to, to really, you know, get you past that, to really ignite the badass energy that's your birthright, what you were born with, to, to unlearn all the social effects that we've been, that's been crammed down our throat since we've been born, you yeah. know? And, you know, it's things we've learned for our, our parents and our parents don't know any better because they were taught that. Then it's things we've learned from society and it's things we've learned from all this other stuff. And it just gets really hard. So guys, seriously, book a call. It's a free call. Movethinksmile.com forward slash talk. It's about 45 minutes long. 
Elia? I mean, we get crystal clear on a couple things. Yeah, I mean, it's really just an opportunity to figure out if, you know, again, where you are and where you want to go. If we can help you get there, then we will certainly let you know and share with you everything that we have going on. But if not, then we will steer you in another direction. And, you know, we're here. We want to we're here in service. We're here to share our knowledge and our experience and, you know, again, when I was in my place, you know, I isolated so much and I just want to make sure that people understand that there is somebody who went through what they're going through now. There's mm-hmm. someone that crawled out of that hole, knows how to get you out of it and that you're not crazy. <laughs> you're not alone and you shouldn't be ashamed. Well, the main thing is guys, and you know, I don't know how much you know our story, but you know, we went through burnout. Um, we did hit the burnout, the, we, the pit of burnout. And it sucked. Yep. It was bad. And I burned out over a period of 20 years, multiple times. And every time I thought I was fixing it and it just got worse. New jobs, new cities, LA cover years, new girlfriends, um, (laughs) you know, and, and, and just over and over and over again. And just like, and just nothing was working. And it wasn't until we hit the rock bottom and guys, you don't want to be there. You know, if, if you're tired of being tired, if you're sick of being there, get on the phone with us, let's chat. And uh, we're going to get crystal clear exactly what's causing your fatigue, what's causing your exhaustion, get crystal clear on exactly what's causing the burnout syndrome and the other symptoms that you're experiencing, like weight gain or maybe depression or anxiety or some of those other crazy things going through your head. You know, yeah. we'll get crystal clear on exactly where you want to go and the steps you can take to get there. So guys, come on over to movethinksmile.com forward slash talk. You could also private message either one of us. You can private message us on this page. You can leave a comment. Just let us know how we can support you. And until then, guys, we hope you have the best Saturday that you can. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care, guys.